This is Bent TV. We're at Shepparton Out in the Open Festival and we're speaking with Neil, the president of Vic Bears Melbourne. Basically what we do, we have some regional um, members of our group. So basically um, jumping out, coming out to Shepparton is showing our pride to them and also acknowledging that we exist as well and that we are embracing all different sides of the community. Um, we're also planning on going to Dalesford for um, Bear Octobia, um, which is a three-day event in um, early December as well. You have a significant birthday coming up. What's, what celebrations are you organising for that? Well, yeah, it's our 21st um, birthday. Um, we're actually having um, an actual dinner for our 21st, as well as it coincides with our normal den night meeting, so there'll be cakes as well um, going around at our normal den night events. Could you explain a bit more about the, the Bear Health initiative? What, what's that trying to promote and achieving? Uh, well, Bear, Health, Bear Heart is what our initiative is called. It was started about two years ago. Um, what happens is we're doing about four seminars a year, uh, focusing on different aspects. So we're doing one on depression we have had um, with um, Are You OK Day. We've also got our Aqua Splash, which is an aerobics class. We're also working on walking groups as well. Um, and basically the whole idea of um, Bear Heart was to get slight focus on men's health, as in getting bears to walk around, um, soak up the environment and also to focus on that, not so we're just a social group anymore. We're branching out into that aspect as well. Um, we've just done a conference on um, PrEP. So we're in conjunction with the VAC and Pronto as well. We're down in Albury, we're SWAG, uh, which is uh, social Wodonga Albury Gays. Uh, we have a community centre there and we come up here to connect the dots, meet the locals here. So. We invite them down next week for our, our Pride Fair Day, so yeah, that's what we're here for. Now, you're originally from Melbourne. So Sydney. What? Sydney. And then Melbourne. Oh, sorry. And then Melbourne, and then Albury, yeah. Okay, so what's the story there? That's a bit of a... Uh, yeah, it is. I, I grew up in Sydney, love Sydney, but I, I outgrew Sydney. I, it was, I felt like I... Outgrew? I'd, yeah, I felt like I outlived there. I was there too long. Didn't feel like I lived there anymore, so I went to Melbourne. And then I felt like I was sort of still in Sydney. And then I found the country town, which is a place that is in between. Yeah. And it's perfect. Yeah, it's a perfect lifestyle. Oh now you've been very busy yeah, after getting that. Yeah. <laughs> when I arrived in um, Albury, there was no visible gay. There was. There's another gay group there. But I didn't connect to that group. Um, it wasn't enough for me. I need to be entertained. I need to... Uh, have lots of stuff to do and uh, so I thought what am I going to do about that and I started Swag. Uh, it started off small and now it's grown to the point where we've got a community centre uh, but we do shows every month. We get anywhere between three to four hundred people, sometimes 420, 430, yeah it's good and we won an award, the Globe Award for connecting a the Aubrey Wodonga community, which was great for us. In 15 months, we did that. So, that's a serious yeah. achievement. Congratulations. Massive. Thank you. <laughs> What's the main purpose of swag? I believe that you said that uh, earlier that uh, it, it's look, quite a mix of the yeah. local population that are coming to your event. Yeah, it's it's not just about being gay. It's not about being transgender. It's about being a part of a community. So, at our shows, we don't just get LGBTQI and all the rainbow colours. We get Indigenous. We get straight we get people that you wouldn't believe they come anywhere up to the age of 85 to 90. So, mixture massive mixed music, group yeah so and we kind of work backwards where people go out and put a voice there but we we went backwards and went first of all if we're going to be in the community we have to meet the community so we did that and we brought the community to us it is a special occasion not only are we here celebrating out in the open in shepparton but we have a member that is about to uh, gain her dykes on bikes melbourne backpatch and who would that be this would be marsh here hi Hello there, marsh. so when did you join the uh, about a year ago yeah yeah, better you. What, uh, what have you experienced and what's made you encourage you to? Uh, yeah, just wanted to a bunch of girls to go ride bike and bike with. I just got my bike and I was new as well, so I wanted to, to drive with experienced riders as well and so I can stay safe as well. And what does this achievement mean to you, getting a car? Full member. Excitement. I 
Being, cool. Being part of Dykes on Bikes, we're an official chapter of the San Francisco uh, Club, which started back in 78, um, and we're very privileged to be a part of that. And this back patch holds a lot of history, and with that become, uh, comes a lot of commitment uh, with the club. And Marsha's, uh, in the 12 months she's been with us, she's um, put in a lot of time and effort. Um, people might not know, but she's, she's a bit of a whiz with computers and done a lot to help us out with our website and bits and pieces like that. She rides all the way from uh, Seymour, rain, hail or shine, um, down to Melbourne for meetings and that, and it's a, a huge commitment and we couldn't be more proud to have a part of the club. So congratulations, Marsh. Awesome. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. you deserve it. Awesome. We're at the Out in the Open Festival in Shepparton. What is a glow? A GLOW is an LGBTI liaison officer. They're people that uh, work for Victoria Police. They might be people, so members that wear uniforms, they might be the PSOs that you see at the train stations, or they might be members of the public service, or some of the people that work behind the scenes in the offices. And they're basically um, members of Victoria Police who have a little bit more knowledge and information about the LGBTI community, and so can be a go-to person for community members or other people within the organisation to ask questions around community issues, to report matters to and to engage with community. Can you give us some examples of how a GLOW can actually assist our community? Yeah. Um, so GLOWs, uh, we have GLOWs based at a number of police stations around Victoria. It's not most of their full-time jobs. They do it on top of their regular day job, being on the van or whatever it is they're doing. But they're a person you can contact if you, for example, want to report a crime. So if you've experienced um, some kind of you know, hate crime or a crime motivated by prejudice that you'd like to report to police um, and you're not comfortable maybe going into a police station and reporting to somebody across the counter. If you ask to speak to the GLOW or call up first and contact the GLOW, they're sort of like a soft landing for you. They're people that will have a better understanding of some of the issues that are faced, understand appropriate use of language. And if they're not able to assist you directly, they'll be able to refer to the right part of the organisation but help explain what some of the issues might be as they're making that referral. Now, within our community, of course, we have different people with different levels of experience and uh, being open. Yep. What are the different ways that they could make contact, you know, if they're a bit nervous or anxious or perhaps their situation is such that it, they're not ready to take yep. that first big leap? So there's the GLOWs, as I said, based at the police stations, and we have a list that's published on the Victoria Police website that's updated... We try to do it every month to make sure that it's accurate. Uh, so that's got the names of all the members and their contact number. But if you're not comfortable going into that station or calling the person directly, there's also a general GLOW phone number and a general GLOW email. And they're answered by people that work in my office at police headquarters in the city. Um, and we can then email back or call back and have a sort of a conversation and see what people need assistance with and then help to do a soft referral to another part of the organisation to assist them that way. So you don't actually have to come into a station to talk to somebody. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. So the Out and About program, it's a community visitor scheme. Um, so we uh, arrange volunteers to visit older LGBTIQ people, um, either weekly or fortnightly, and just have a chat with them, have a cup of tea. Uh, yeah. So what sort of support do they actually provide, other than just a, a companionship? It's, it's just companionship. It's just a, a friendly visitor, basically. So a lot of older people might be socially isolated or just lonely or maybe just have lost a connection with the LGBTI community. And so we're just really providing a little bit more community um, connection. And how would someone make contact to actually find out how, what's available to them? Yeah, so you can find us on the Switchboard website um, or you can email us or um, just give us a call and we can provide more details. Uh, is the support available for all members of the community? Um, it's for anyone that's on a home care package or uh, residing in an aged care facility. Out in the Open Festival 2016 here in Shepparton. Damien, a successful year for you. A wonderful year for us. We've had 13 events this year over three and a half days and we're not even halfway through. We're, we're here today, it's Carnival Day in the, in the Queen's Gardens. We've got over 60 stall holders, uh, entertainers, food vendors and family friendly environment. You can see the pig pen, <laughs> the pig pen behind me here, the petting zoo uh, and a jumping castle. So um, uh, as I said, 13 events, it's been a, a wonderful year for us and we're having a great day here at Carnival Day. So what does Shepparton have to look forward to over the next 12 months? The next 12 months. So 
we're at five years and we've grown. You know, we've we had a couple of events yesterday with over 100, 120 people at each event, and they were the health forums. Uh, our dinner uh, and drag show last night with the commissioner Rowena Allen uh, and Kay Sarah, Cabaret Bazaar drag show. We had uh, about 80 people at that as well. Um, and the glamour party tonight. Again, we've easily sold 80 tickets. So um, the numbers are expanding year after year, uh, which is exciting. And so uh, as we move into uh, our sixth year and and look at moving up to 10, uh, you know, we're looking at expanding further. Sadly, I think having to move from this beautiful venue we are here, for example. You know, we're at the Queen's Gardens um, with a gorgeous rose beds for those who haven't seen the, the the place here, and lots of people and shade. You know, um, the count council has another couple of venues, you know, down by the lake, which would be lovely, uh, or out at the showgrounds, um, which is a big patch of grass. Lovely showgrounds, millions of dollars invested, but we really love this place. It's like home, you know, we're not fenced in and we are out in the open, you know. We're at the Out in the Open Festival in Shepparton. We're here with Ash at the HIV Rapid Testing Tent. We're basically here uh, at this festival testing, HIV testing mainly, rapid testing. So what sort of questions are you being asked as part of this process? Uh, obviously sort of rapid testing, it, it's just a five minute test, ten minute test you know, compared to others or what? It's basically, it's a ten minute test, uh, but the thing with this test is uh, there is a 12 week window period. Uh, so if there has been a risk recently, and usually when we say risk, it you know, um, it's a uh, condomless anal intercourse, uh, and if there was any within the last 12 weeks, then uh, they will have to come back, cover that 12 weeks for a conclusive test. So the test kit basically relies on uh, the 12 week window period, which is um, unlike the full blood test, the HIV serology test, which uh, where the window period is only six weeks. So you get your test results faster, quicker, in 10 minutes, but you have to cover 12 weeks for a conclusive result. So potentially, if it is within that period, you'll actually have the test again to, to be absolutely sure? Absolutely, yep. But again, that later test could also be a rapid test. It can be a rapid test, yes. So we usually, that's one of the reasons why we usually encourage people to get tested once every three months so that they can keep track. We're at the Out in the Open Shepparton and we're speaking with Emily at the switchboard tent. Emily, I believe you're the coordinator for the counselling service, is that correct? I am indeed. I am indeed. Would, you, would you like to tell us what the counselling service provide and how it is actually provided? Absolutely. So the switchboard um, counselling service is a telephone and web chat counselling service that's run by volunteers who identify as LGBTIQ. Um, these volunteers can chat to people who identify as LGBTIQ, their friends, their family members, health services, basically anyone who would like to call, have a chat, have a if they have a question that they'd like answered, our volunteers are um, staffing the phones and are there to actually have a chat about whatever the caller would like. We're here at the launch of the Midsummer Festival at the Meat Market and it's absolutely fantastic. The joint is jumping. This year's festival is so exciting. There's so much to see. There's 130 events. There's arts, there's culture, there's sport. There's something for everybody. It's full of social fun and we all want to get out there and see as much as we can. Happy 30th birthday, Midsummer. Uh, thank you all for coming. This is an incredibly important evening for us. It's a chance for us to showcase some of the stuff we've been talking about and some of the wonderful changes we've been saying are coming. Um, and I hope tonight you leave here seeing that we are true to our word and we are making those changes. Um, Midsummer is more than a logo and more than a festival to, to me and to the rest of the board and our staff. It's a way of life and it's, a, it's a, a platform for the community to express themselves in a really safe place however they see fit. And everything we do and every decision we make, we really always think through the impact that, that will have on what we previously called the community. What we've realised lately though is that our community is made up of many communities and it's not one community. And when I talk about changes that we are making at Midsummer, um, it's not radical and it's certainly not changing it from being an open access festival. It's absolutely never ever going to change from being an LGBTQI plus festival 
But what it is, is it's going to be more accessible to the wider community. We really are thinking through how we make it a more diverse festival. How do we encourage more of our trans people to participate in this festival? More indigenous people from our community. Uh, more people with disability. These people who probably feel like they're not welcome to participate. And it is open for everybody and we will be doing a lot more to make sure those people feel welcome and feel embraced by our community. So that's probably the most significant thing that we are trying to um, introduce into the organisation. Um, and the program, when it comes out later tonight, you will see that there's certainly, 2017 is a platform for that, um, and some changes have been made, but that's just the start of what we're going to do. We really want to make sure that everybody feels welcome to participate in this incredible festival. Now, the program we're going to see is jam-packed. There are a lot of things, and I know what everyone's going to do. They're going to go straight, and they're going to pick the things that they know are going to be good. I implore you this time to go and pick a few things that you wouldn't normally go and see, because there are some things, and I found last year, I, I went to a couple of things, and I'll be very honest, I went out of obligation. I thought I'd better go to these things. And I was blown away by the unbelievable talent that hadn't yet been discovered, that I hadn't heard of. So don't just go for the top picks or the headline acts. Really go and look for some really up and coming emerging artists and some of the wonderful things that they're doing. Um, also, uh, a new curated event for, for, from Midsummer is Horizon. That is going to be incredible. It's going to push some boundaries, and I think you really can't miss that. It's at the testing ground, so please make sure you see that. And most importantly, thank you to the community that love us, that forgive us our stuff-ups, that embrace everything that we are. It, it's, it's, it's so heartwarming to see the way that the community do rally together. Um, and as, as the bulk of people wouldn't even see some things that go wrong with our organisation or at our events, because people always step up and fill the gaps. So, um, you know, it sounds a little cliche, but Midsummer really is your festival. And we are working harder all the time to make it uh, more welcoming to everybody as well. Um, I would now like to thank uh, to welcome Harriet Singh, Minister Harriet Singh, who's uh, here officially for Mr. Martin Foley. He did say he's sorry he couldn't be here tonight. Welcome to the program launch. My name is Harriet Singh. I'm a member of Parliament in the state Labor government. I'm the first out woman ever to be in the Victorian Parliament. And with that... enormous amount of pride and responsibility and a commitment to do the very best I can by our communities. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet this evening. I'd like to pay my respects to their elders past and present and I'd like to acknowledge any Aboriginal leaders, new or emerging or current, who have joined us here this evening. I'm really sorry that I'm not Minister Martin Foley, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, but I do have a little bit of lesbo cred, so I'm hoping that'll see me <laughs> And I am the ambassador for the Safe Schools program here in Victoria. <laughs> what we have here tonight is the launch of a program which is, at its very core, inclusive, and wonderful. And when I was listening to the performance earlier and wishing that I could wear high heels like that without going for a stack, I was, <laughs> I was thinking just how wonderful it is to have so much colour and vibrancy and so many opportunities with over 120 events at more than 80 venues to come in the upcoming program. All of this happens because of the efforts of people like Karen and Steve, John, but it also happens because of the many volunteers who work behind the scenes. And when I was thinking about tonight and how it's all come together, I know that no event takes place without an awful lot of hard work. Coordinating, phone calls, lists, all of the glamorous, unglamorous, unsexy stuff that you have to do in order to give people a truly wonderful time. But I want to congratulate everybody through blood, sweat and tears who's put together the most compelling and diverse program that we've seen yet. What we have is an opportunity to spread our wings even further. After 30 years, it just goes from strength to strength. And what we're going to have is an amazing program of events, which, as John pointed out, gives us the opportunity to learn about things that we wouldn't necessarily see or be exposed to in our everyday lives, to bring people along to see things that may be entirely new to them. Hi, 
I, we're here at the Midsummer launch and I'm here with Trevor, who's the creative and artistic director of the Melbourne Musical Theatre Festival that has two shows in the Midsummer Festival this year at the Athenaeum Theatre. That's pretty exciting. It's very exciting, putting on the very first musical theatre festival outside of New York and the US um, and then being able to find two shows that we can put into Midsummer as well. And, and that's what's exciting. We've got a fantastic production of Some Enchanted Evening, Rodgers and Hammerstein music, never been done professionally in Australia. We've got a, an amazing cast, Antoinette Halloran, Jackie Dark, wow. Dimity Shepherd, Jason Wosley, Andrew Jones, uh, Adam Preslecki's playing the piano. You couldn't ask for a better cast, great music and ticket prices that will blow you away. They're so low. And then we've got a new musical called Criss Crossed, which is about a young man who's a cross-dresser who is deciding whether he should tell his fiancée before the wedding or after the wedding. Of course, it's a comedy. Everyone has a secret. It's very, very funny. Who doesn't love something like that? Now, I think it's really fantastic that, you know, we've got a musical festival, a musical theatre festival in the first place. And it's, uh, it's really great that you guys have decided to bring some of your content along to the Midsummer Festival. How did that happen? It came about because, I mean, I've been connected through Midsummer through other people's projects for a long time. But it seemed to me that when I spoke to Midsummer about the possibility that there weren't any music theatre projects really in the festival. And I said, well, we need to get some music theatre into the Midsummer Festival. We love music theatre. We do. We, we all get passionate about music theatre. And then these two shows seemed absolutely perfect fit for both festivals. That's really exciting. So when are they happening during the festival? Well, um, Some Enchanted Evening opens on the 6th of January, so it's running up until the 28th of January, so the first two weeks of midsummer. And crisscross, there's only 10 performances, and it runs from the 20th of January through to the 28th. They both sound really exciting and two really different musical productions to go and see. Yeah, you couldn't think of two more different shows. One's going to be a lot of fun and the other one's just going to be hilarious. Well, that is the kind of diversity we love to see in Midsummer, and we can't wait to go and see these as well. You can check out all the details at midsummer.org.au and why not check out the rest of the Musical Theatre Festival as well? He's a fish out of water and he's here tonight with me at the Midsummer launch. Hi, Merman Dan. Hey, nice to meet you. Now, you've, you've got some massive Instagram fame, haven't you? Yeah, I'm building it up. Um, not for my cabaret show. It's actually for me as a, as a merman for hire at the moment. So, so for those that don't know, the, the Merman Dan on Instagram is something a little fishy, something a little fabulous and something damn sexy. You should absolutely go and check it out. And he's got a show in Midsummer. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, my debut for Midsummer. I'm really excited, and especially for the 30-year anniversary, I'm really, really excited to be part of this. It's really cool. Well, you're no stranger to cabaret and performing, are you? No, no. no. I've, um, I'm originally from Sydney, and I've done uh, uh, quite a few shows for uh, the Mardi Gras up there, so it's uh, really exciting to actually bring something here to Melbourne and do something you know, quite fresh. So how is it, well, fishy and fresh, quite frankly, how is it when you're putting something together, when you're taking a personality like you've created online and created a very beautiful visual that's for hire and now you're turning it into a show. How, what is it like when you kind of throw all those elements together? Yeah, well, look, it's, a, it's an interesting one because uh, the Merman Dan really is uh, just many layers of my own journey. Um, I know and, that well. uh, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and look, at the end of the day, it's a, it, it is a cabaret about uh, love and acceptance as a gay merman. And it's, uh, it's really a, a collection of songs exploring uh, people that feel like they're on the edge of the edge and uh, finding a way to translate what it is like for the outer uh, to really, yeah. Uh, share their love. That is awesome and exciting. I'm really excited to see it, but here's what we all want to know. Are you in the fish tail for the whole show? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the fish tail the whole show. So are people carrying you around? or? <laughs> uh, I've still got to work out some mer wranglers to uh, get me on and off stage, but um, uh, it, it is, it's a one hour cabaret show. It's a very intimate uh, combination of sea shanties and torch songs. <laughs> Um, so it, it really is a combination of uh, you know, intimate love songs from, a sea, uh, from the sea. Fantastic. Well, if you want to find out if it's better down where it's wetter, go and see the Merman Jans Cabaret Show at Midsummer this year. 
I'm here with Justice and Trainwreck at the Midsummer launch, and they're doing a comedy show at the Hair Hole called Justice and Tra Trainwreck Change the World. Now, first things first, which one of you is Justice and which one is Trainwreck? Uh, I'm Dwayne Justice. And I'm Jake Trainwreck. So what can we expect from you two cowboys in the Midsummer Festival? Well, uh, one of our favourite things to do is historical reenactments of our favourite events from history. Uh, what's some of the events we like to do, Jake? Uh, maybe uh, Princess Diana and her car accident. <laughs> wow! Uh, JFK's assassination, another favourite of ours. My favourite is uh, Twin Towers. Yeah, uh, September 11. We're very sensitive, though, with that one. Uh, well, uh, well, I'm glad to hear you. should be more... And, and just as sensitive with Diana. We love Diana. Well, uh, so you have a lot of fun in your show? Is it, is it stand-up? Is it a mix of improv? What's the deal? Uh, so it's a mixture of uh, sketch, we like that, um, and clowns. Because uh, we, uh, we went to clown school, didn't we, Jake? We sure did, Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's plenty, of, plenty of fun and funny things that everyone can expect from your show. Definitely. We're very lovable. And you guys are doing your show at the Hair Hole, which is a festival hub that's a part of Midsummer. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? We're very excited to be with Roland and Crusader at Hairs and Hyenas at the Hair Hole, uh, one of the best venues in Melbourne. Well, I'm looking forward to coming and seeing what crazy comedy you two cowboys have in store. You know, you can check out all the details at midsummer.org.au.